Hi, following our Apple professional learning from last week, I'm going to show you how to create a really simple spreadsheet using numbers, uh, using the numbers app. Uh, this time I'm using it on iCloud.com rather than on my iPad. Um, you could also do this on exactly the same features on your iPad, or if you've got a Mac, you can do it on the numbers app there too. Purpose of this is to create a collaborative document that the students will be working from. I'm going to go for a science theme and I'll talk you through what I've created so far. So I'm logged into iCloud.com with my Apple ID, and I've already started a template here, so let's load that one up. So whilst it loads, the example I'm gonna go through is a sound example for year four, and I want the children to build up some evidence over the course of a number of lessons. So this isn't the outcome of just one lesson, but it is as a place for them to record their findings over a period of time that I can then refer back to in the coming weeks. So I'm going to talk you through the basic setup first of all. I've got a series of different tables. First of all, I want simply to know who the children are within the group, and I've asked them to put their name there. My second one is an activity I want them to complete. I would like them to go around the school, or if they're home learning, uh, go around home to listen to the different sounds. And I want to record two different locations each, so making six locations in total. So really emphasizing the teamwork here that the input of all the team members is important. This column on the end for data logging uh, might be via an app on the iPad, or if you're in school, it could be um, via obviously data loggers themselves as well. And you've got control over how many columns you, re you require on this particular sheet. Next activity is a writing activity. And I would like them as a group to plan uh, a very short uh, TV show. I've given them four different scenes to consider and then they would script those scenes in this column here. And then to ensure teamwork and that everyone is involved, they can just write down what their particular role is, whether they're cameraman or editor, or whatever it might be. For the final task, I've set this one up very slightly differently. I want them to each have a different instrument. And I want them to identify making high sounds and low sounds, so they can complete that in this table at the bottom. But here I've added a photo placeholder. So when they're on their iPad, they can click the little plus and they can import a photo from their camera roll or maybe a video of themselves playing that instrument um, as well. When I then want to share this with multiple groups, and I'm happy with the layout, I simply right click at the top and I can then duplicate. And although it's not right click on your iPad, it's a very similar function. Once you've set up your basic skeleton, you simply duplicate the sheets, rename it to your group names or however you want to decide how you're going to differentiate between different groups. Let's create a very simple shareable uh, worksheet and workbook together. So I'm going to click the plus to create a new sheet. And I don't actually want this table to start with. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete. Okay. Um, again, it's slightly different on the iPad. You click on the table and select delete on there rather than right clicking. And it's slightly different again within the actual numbers app. So I'm going to import a table, which in numbers, no matter what uh, app you're using, looks like this at the top. And let's go for just a basic table here. And let's have some of those rows deleted. So I'm just going to delete the selected rows. And I want them to group one and their names. And let's have this time four children work in the group. So very simply typed across the top. I want to change the name of that table. I can do so by clicking on the table, clicking the paintbrush, and then just renaming it here. Let's have a look. Did that go across? It is. Super. And I can change colors, fonts, etc. if I need to on there. Again, it's very slightly differently different on the iPad app. The reason I can't show you the iPad app is because my screen decided to stop screen sharing at the moment, which is uh, which is great but you'll get the basic idea anyway. You can also add text boxes where needed. So let's add a text box. Let's just add some little instructions in here for the children, double clicking. Uh, please enter all the names of your group in this table. Your instructions could be whatever they want to be or need to be here. I'm just gonna align that with that table there as well. Let's create a really short investigation table for them to consider. So let's go for this table layout this time. Now I can move this table 
anywhere I want to be on the grid. Let's keep our tables down this side and maybe our structures on the right hand side. Again, it's entirely up to you. Let's rename it um, as well correctly, investigation one. And for this investigation, they're going to identify um, different locations around the school and the sounds they can hear. So here I want their names to be. So let's just for now, one, two, three, four. And I want them each to note down some things they can hear. So let's have the playground, the hall, classroom, and an office. I'm going to delete those extra rows that I don't need as well. OK, let's add some text instructions. So I'm going to click on the text at the side, just drag it across here, double click on it. Um, as you move around the school, record and note the different sounds that you can hear. Now, on the iPad, you also have the ability to add in some media in there as well. So maybe you might want the children to add an example sound effect as they come through to those different places, which is absolutely great. And you can do that just by inserting and then it can be an audio file into there. You can continue to build up your table as needed. I can be adding shapes in, I can add some pictures in. So maybe I want to put a picture in of a particular location and the children go to that location to then hear the different sounds. It's up to you how you build the spreadsheet up. Just remembering that within the Apple uh, suite of products, they all work quite similarly really. Where I want to change font sizes, styles, colors, etc., it's the paintbrush. And you've got a lot of controls we've been able to play around with. Within numbers specifically, I can add a table here. I can add text boxes here. I can also insert shapes. When you're inserting a shape into any of the Apple products, if you double click within the shape, it also becomes a text box as well. So it might be that you want to uh, play around with the look of those. I, like I said, I can add pictures in, so maybe I'm gonna add pictures of the instruments that they're going to be using. It's completely up to you. Let's go back to the one that I set up, and I'm gonna rename that one by double click on it, simply calling it group one. Right click and duplicate. Group two, and let's finally go for one more group. Duplicate. Group three, okay? So I'm ready to share this one now. Maybe I've planned something that will take one lesson, maybe it's over several lessons, but the idea is that children collaborate on this together. So it's important now that I share that information with them. And the way to do that, is to click on this little collaborate icon at the top. And if it's the first time you've done this, you get some different options. I want to copy the link, and I want to make sure that people I invite, anyone with the link, I want them to be able to make changes or view. So in this case, I want them to make changes. I could add a password if I want to, um, maybe not a need for this particular case. So just double checking again, anyone with the link can make changes. I'm going to copy that link and then I'm going to share. And then what it will do is it will make the document shareable. There we go. Copy that link. Now, if I go into my emails, I've already started drafting an email here. So in this particular case, I want Mike in year five. Maybe we've discussed the spreadsheet as part of a planning meeting. So I'm just going to copy and paste the link to that workbook into that email and Mike's going to give me some feedback on it and take a look, maybe make some changes and send it back to me. If I was sending this workbook to the children to start editing, I do it in exactly the same way. So I share the same link, content of the email might give us some simple instructions of what to do. And then I simply click send on my email and then that fires off to your recipients and they can then start editing your numbers spreadsheets uh, with the instructions. This can be done for keynotes and pages as well. And it can be done, like I said, within the actual apps on the iPad and also on iCloud.com. Let's take a look and see what it looks like on Mike's iPad. And he'll talk you through how to make the changes, edits, etc., as he's working through it from a pupil perspective. 
So you can see um, I've got Russell's email, I'm gonna open it. It'll give you an option of which browser to open it in. I'm gonna open it in Chrome, other browsers are available. Um, and it'll take you to the iCloud uh, link within that browser. Um, as you'll see when it opens, um, I can go through group one, group two, group three. Um, but at the minute you can't edit anything because this is on iCloud, you need to open it in numbers. So uh, on the top right, sorry, at the top you can see your title, year four sound workbook. On the right, you've got open and download. I'm gonna press open. Now, as Russell said, you need to make sure you're signed into iCloud, otherwise this will not work, okay? Um, so you go through all the iCloud uh, signing settings and you press open. Okay, and this is what you can see then. So I can zoom in and zoom out to make sure I can see the whole page um, just by pinching or whatever the opposite of pinching is. And what I can do, and if I want to tap to add an image to here, I can press that. Um, I can go to, now I know we're not looking at sound, haven't got that many sound images there, but I could put in some of our work um, on the Egyptians maybe, um, or something more suitable. And that photo could be added in there. Um, I can come to the sound survey, I can add in a location and then type. So down the bottom, you can see I've got my keyboard. So I'll tap that keyboard and I'm gonna to go to uh, my balcony. Uh, what can I hear? Uh, I can hear birds, cars, uh, dog barking, for example. And that is how you just type those in. When you're done, press the close keyboard button, bottom right of your keyboard, and you can navigate um, through that. Again, to add picture, just press Press the box, tap the add button, it'll take you to your uh, camera roll. Um, and again, you can edit just by tapping the box and pressing the keyboard in the bottom right corner. Okay. From here, if I want to share this, after I've done my, my group's data, um, I will just go to the person and the tick in the top right corner. Um, send link, just like Russell was showing us from his device. Choose how I want to send that. So I'm probably going to choose Gmail. The link is already in here and I can choose to send that back to Russell. Um, check out my sound work. Uh, um, and you can press send then and he'll get a copy of that.